time now to pass the first part. Yes. 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 Let us stand as we worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
who set the stars in Galilee, he who calmed the raging sea, that came crushing over me, who called as me, he who bring the morning light, the hope of
Once again, we want to welcome all those who have just joined us by joining me from live, happy live streaming. Welcome. And now let's go into some of the announcements. Prayer portals. Okay? Prayer portals online this coming Tuesday, 31st January, is on at 8.30 to 9.45 or soon. The Zoom ID and the password is given on screen. Next. Prayer Author Online will be resumed on Friday only, 3rd of February from 10.30 to 11.45. Also via Zoom, the Zoom ID and the password is given on screen. Mission Support for Year 2023. For this year, we have set aside 9,000 ringgit to support all those people in the mission field. Okay? And as of today, we have collected only 1,001 and there's still a shortfall of 7,009. 
those, those who felt that like contribute to this mission fund, you can either drop in the offering bag box at the back and please indicate in the envelope this is for mission fund or online bank into FCT account with main bank. The account number is different from the tax and offering. Please take note. It's 5122-3151-5824. So please also indicate that it's for mission fund. February service schedule. Okay, it will be on even on the screen also. So for first of the week is uh, we have speaker, evangelist, Deloitte, is uh, on site. 12 February, speaker is Pastor Joshua Lee by Zoom. 19 Feb, is Associate Minister Sandy Lee on site. And 26 Feb, Elder Tani Ping by Zoom. So please take note, so you have the first two. Alternate on site, one the first and the third, and the second and the fourth is on the highest. Okay, now I will invite Pastor Joshua to come and pray for all who are born in the month of January. After that, we will also pray for the dean who will be going on for the studies in Australia. So now we invite Pastor to come. Yes, we want to. Let's come in. <laughs> come is a wonderful thing. Come, let's uh, set your hands towards them as you pray for them. Father, we just want to thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those who are born in the month of January and those who are here, and those who are watching from online. We just want to pray a, pray a blessing, Lord, in this new year. Uh, uh, even uh, even uh, celebrate the birthday of this new year, Lord, we just pray to God that you call forth your blessing, your spiritual blessing be upon them, and you continue to favor them, your grace and your uh, favor will come upon them in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless them with good health and strength so that they are able to continue to serve you in whatever uh, area that you will open the door for them. And we just ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. You want to say a word? You want to go to Australia? No? Because it's not like. Where you going to study? Where? So, I'll be leaving to Australia on the 19th of February. So, I want to say thank you to MCT for uh, this like, whole 19 years of my life. Uh, yeah, for your care and like all the like all the Bible lessons and everything that I've uh, learned here. Yeah, thank you. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to further her study in overseas in Australia and we just pray that God that it is another milestone for her. Lord, there is a change of uh, uh, season for her or even as we go for furthering her study. And we pray, God, that your 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 hand be upon her, and as you go before her, and Jesus will prepare everything. Even the community, the spiritual community that he, she will be part of, the, 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 the people, the, the hostel, whatever she's staying. Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus that new, uh, new uh, experiences, Lord, that she will going to encounter and she will experience, Lord, in a new environment, a new culture. Father, we just thank you that God that you will continue to unveil your plan and purposes for our life. Even as we begin to study, Lord, we just pray that God that you will continue to direct our path, Lord. And we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your angel watering over her, Lord, in Jesus' name. Continue to grant her good health and strength and protection the entire duration of her stay and study in Australia, Lord. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bring the whole packs into the storehouse that they may be put in my house 
test me in these days, the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Okay, next slide. For those who are uh, for online giving, again, you can go online to Maybank, FCT account with Maybank. Account number is 5122 3151 3600. For those who are on site, you can still continue to drive the box, offering box behind. Okay, let us pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the abundant blessings that you have given to us. And even for this time that we can come back and give you a small portion of what you have so richly blessed us with. We ask the Lord to bless the cheerful giver and bless the gifts to the Lord for the burdens of thy kingdom. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Next Sunday, the uh, 5th of February, will be on site at 7 a.m. And the speaker will be Evangelist Reloy Kung, and the topic will be the temptations of Jesus. Okay. Next. Oh. <laughs> okay. So next one. Uh, okay. This morning, we are blessed to have our honorary elder Enoch as our speaker for today. He will be speaking on Christ Cross on Calvary. Without further ado, I will pass this time to Elder Inouye. Elder Inouye. Before he comes, he requests us for us to sing a song of the hymn that is favorite him. Every you rise and sing the old rugged cross. For it was on that cross, 
Jesus suffer and die to pardon and sanctify me. So I cherish the old ragged cross to my trophies and lies I lay
was the cross of repentance. And on the other side was the cross of protection. You can save and save us now. Why don't you save us and repent? So on Golgotha, when we show the cross in Golgotha, Jesus Christ, it must always be shown with three crosses. Uh, and they will tell the whole story of the cross of Jesus Christ. But without the other two crosses, we don't know what is the response of humanity, of mankind, of those who accept Jesus, of those who reject Jesus. What will happen to them? So it must be shown with three crosses. Now Jesus Christ was crucified at Calvary, Golgotha, which is called the place of a scarf, with two others, one on each side. Now Calvary, as I said, should, should be dread, picture with three crosses, instead of just a cross of Jesus. And the three crosses tell us a true and complete picture God's desire to reconcile the whole world to himself in the person of his beloved son. If only one cross seen, we will not know that Jesus' sacrifice was also rejected and it was also accepted in repentance by those who know him and accept him as Lord and Savior. Now the cross of Jesus as presented to the world as a crucifix or as a plain, empty, new, clean cross can be misleading, inaccurate, and insufficient. It may not reflect the full picture and the story of what transpired when Jesus was nailed to the wooden cross and shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. The empty wooden cross presented to the world is just a symbol of Christianity and does not let the world know about John 3.16. Now, the scene at Calvary. Calvary in the Latin word, or Golgotha in Hebrew, Calvary, Latin, Golgotha, Hebrew, means the place of a skull. The skull is a symbol and picture of death, of horror and evil. Jesus and his cross was put upon Golgotha, a skull and evil. Right? Now remember Genesis 3, 15. It reminds us that God will put Amenity, amenity to the devil, the serpent, who tempted Eve, and the seed of Eve. Prophetically, Eve's seed is Jesus, and he will bruise the serpent's head. The crucifixion of Jesus has done this as his cross was now placed on the star, and he had trampled, trampled on Satan's head. His skull was on, on the, uh, his cross was on the skull, and the skull represents death and evil, and also evil one. The Jesus cross on the skull bruised Satan's head. As the Bible said, the evil one who bruised, who bruised his skin. Jesus had defeated Satan, Master's plan, to have Jesus killed, not knowing that Jesus on the cross, the death, his death on the cross, was God's counter plan for saving the world. Satan had wanted to have Jesus killed when he, did, when he took Jesus up to the top of the temple and he asked Jesus to throw himself down and put him quoting the Bible, scripture, saying that God's angels will rescue him uh, and will not let him die. Now there were various forms of execution 
in Jesus' name. John the Baptist, James and Paul were all beheaded. Disciples of Jesus were shot to death by arrows, and Apostle John was boiled in oil. Apostle John was born in oil. Praise God, he survived and was exiled to Patmos. Now, Jesus was crucified on the cross, part of a tree to redeem us from the curse of the world. He was cursed on our behalf and fulfilled the law of Moses. For he died hanging on the cross, on the tree. Uh, because Deuteronomy said, he will hang on the tree, it's a curse. Right? His death and our redemption was for, for the whole world, being a part of God's plan for both Jesus and for the, both the Jews and the Gentiles. Now Jesus on the cross was lifted up on the cross. As Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, John 3, 14, Numbers 21, 9. It was the rebellion and sin of the people of Israel and they were cursed when fiery serpents, with fiery serpents many times. But when the people repented, God instructed Moses to make a bronze serpent and to lift it up to the people. When they looked to the serpent, anyone who was bitten would not live, would not die, or would live and not die. Now the serpent is a symbol of sin. Judge and bronze speaks of divine judgment. Bronze, in scriptural sense, speaks about divine judgment. It was also a type of Christ made sin for us. The bronze serpent that Moses lifted up for the people to look at when he sinned, to be saved and not die. It's a symbol, right? a type of Jesus right? on the cross to live in God's provision for sins in Jesus. We will live and not die. And we look at the cross, we see him from what we see. Just like the Israelites, when you look at the look at the bronze serpent and they begin and they did not. Now the truth there were three Calvary crosses. Calvary should be pictured on a hill with three crosses on it and not only with one wooden cross. The sole cross of Jesus. This cross is the gospel cross. The other two crosses represent the rejection, the reaction of the world to the gospel. The cross of Jesus is a cross of reconciliation of God in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. One cross, probably on Jesus' lap, was the cross of rejection from the world. Right? For, for the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that perish. To the Jews, it was a stumbling block and rejection of Jesus as the Messiah. The other cross, and I would say that it was from Jesus' right, because Jesus was ascended and was seated at the right hand of God. The one on the right is always a good person, my right hand man, my right hand man, right? Uh, the cross on Jesus' right represents the cross of, of repentance and of acceptance to believe, forgive, for, for forgiveness and re this reason, redemption of our sins. Now before the ministry of Jesus, John the Baptist came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus also began his ministry saying the same thing, repent for the 
kingdom of God is at hand, Mark 1 15. To reject Jesus is to regret. To repent is to receive God's redemption. Now, Calvary pictured with the three crosses tells a better story of the gospel of our Lord and the consequences of our response to God's love and, uh, and uh, salvation. Now, at the end of the ages and at the second coming of Jesus, there will be a judgment of all the saints in Matthew 25. Jesus suffered the sheep, all the same ones, on his right hand, and the goats, the unsaved ones, on his left. The goats, the sheep are blessed of the Father and shall inherit the kingdom. But the goats on the left are cursed into everlasting fire. Matthew 25. The two criminals crucified on Jesus' side, right and left, represents the sheep on his right, the one who repented and received God's blessings. And he said to Jesus, remember me when you come to the kingdom. And Jesus said to him, you have repented, today you shall be with me in paradise. The other on Jesus' left, I suppose on Jesus' left, are the ghosts, because at the end of the ages, when he comes, and all the people are led to him, he shall separate the goats to the left and the sheep to the right to everlasting life. And the goats, he will say to them, Depart from me, I do not know you. And uh, the one on the left ridiculed Jesus and his gospel. This will regret their faith forever, everlasting life. Now, the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus died by crucifixion on the wooden cross. When we see a cross in front of a building, we know it may be a church. The cross is also a representing, representation of Jesus' death. And every, anyone who carries it or wears it on his body is probably Christian and follower of Christ in life or in death. The cross of Jesus is presented to the world mainly in two forms by Christians and by the Catholic, and by the Catholic Church Catholic means universal church as a crucifix as a crucifix the Catholic Church woman in this case as a crucifix or represented in the, in the church in the banner as a clean empty, unstained, no blood-stained cross. Right. It's a reason. Represented like that. And it's wrong. It's wrong. The Roman Catholics has the cross as a crucifix with a figure of Jesus on it, crucified as in his death, nailed to the cross. His loins are covered with his undergarments. What the church does, too shameful, too right, unaccepted to see Jesus hanging naked on the cross. So they cover him with his undergarments. This picture and representation of him on the crucifix is not a true and according to the gospel given by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. He is no more on the cross. If we put Jesus on the cross as in the crucifix, we are saying that he is still nailed to the cross. He is, he, he has, he is dead, but he is not, not buried. He is not risen again. To represent Jesus on the crucifix is to deny that Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. It is a wooden cross. Jesus is not on the crucifix anymore. So we should not wear, I think, for us. You want to wear a cross, a plain cross, a golden cross, whatever it is. But don't wear a crucifix. 
because he has saved you the world. Jesus is still nailed to the cross. He has, he has not taken up, he is not buried, he has not raised again. And if he's not raised again, we are not justified by his death. The historians and theologians also say that the Romans crucified the victims without the guns and was left naked for all to see. This is a cruel, shameful punishment for criminals and Jesus died in the same way. For modesty's sake, the Catholic Church had Jesus launched heaven on the crucifixion. It would be scandalous to leave Jesus naked on the cross in pictures or in the, in the banners. Now in John 19, 20, 24, before the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took off his garments and coat and cast lots for them. This fulfilled the scripture in Psalms 22, 18. And also as they pierced his hands and his feet and stared at Jesus, he was, he was staring at him, naked. That was the way the Romans crucified the victims. Naked, shameful, because of the criminals, because whatever it is, they were not worthy of being just of honor. Now the truth of the cross is that it is an empty cross. Jesus has died. He was buried and has risen from the dead. By putting Jesus back on the crucifix means he is still being crucified there on the cross. And his, Christ and his sacrifice on the cross has not yet finished. He said, on the cross. It is finished. It is finished. His death, his, uh, his purpose to die on the cross, it has been finished. It is still on the cross. It is not finished yet. Right? Because he is not buried, he is not raised, and he is not justified. And he has been raised. Has been offered as a lamb of cross, lamb of God, for the forgiveness of our sins. And it has been done. If he was buried and has risen from the dead, then the cross or crucifix must be empty without him. The non Roman Catholics represent the cross as an empty, wooden, clean cross. Clean, new, unblemished cross, unlike that of the old of the him who sent the old rugged cross. And I remember a picture that showed the cross. Nice, clean, wooden cross. That is not the cross of Jesus. That is not the cross of Jesus. There would is an old rugged cross. Old, not new. There will be near marks and tearing of the wood surface where his hands and feet were pierced through into the wood. It will be heavily stained with his blood and dripping down into the ground. Above where his head was, Pilate wrote, Jesus, King of the Jews. And the Jews said, No, it's not. Take it down. Pilate said, What has been done is done. And this is prophetic in the sense it will be fulfilled when Jesus comes again. The Jews will see him. All eyes will be holy. He comes in the name of the Lord and will be the King of the Jews. This should be the correct representation of the true cross in the world and in any picture of the cross in, in churches and not just an empty, clean, unstained cross. Have, sorry to say, uh, it is not, not a true cause. 
Now this green cross does not fully and adequately tell about the full gospel story of his death for us. A plain empty cross, clean cross on the world, uh, to the world, is just about religion and Christianity and not John 3.16 for God's great love for us in the whole world. One Corinthians fifteen four says the cross in is empty, meaning his reason. One Corinthians fifteen he is reason. The cross must be empty and is now alive. The nail marks and blood on the cross means his body was broken for us. One Corinthians fifteen twenty four. Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. His body has been broken for us. His body was scarred and whipped and was blood all over his body, staining the cross. And this is the cross that must be, that must be represented to the world. And to the church, it is not a plain new cross. No, stained with blood, scarred by the nails, the wood pierced through. Marks and blood on the cross means his body was broken for us. Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. By which we are to remember his death by the loss. His body was broken also by the stripes we received and by whose stripes we receive our healing. 1 Peter 2. There is blood all over his cross dripping to the ground. Now reminding us that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood there is no remission. Of our sins. Jesus died. He bled. He bled. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Hebrews 92. A clean, bloodless cross means no blood has been shed. We have not been forgiven yet. So don't represent the cross on the banner as a clean, unstained cross without blood. It must be blood, because without shedding of blood on that cross, we are not forgiven. Now, when Cain unjustified, uh, unjustly killed Abel, Abel's blood fell onto the ground. I don't know how he killed Abel, maybe with a knife, another thing. Right. There was a lot of blood. Right. Okay. Oh. Abel's blood cried out to God from the ground. Genesis 14. Remember, God asked. In where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? He said. And God told me, the blood of Abel cries out to me from the ground. The blood of Abel cries out to me. When Jesus was unjustly killed, his blood on the ground may also have cried out to God, meaning God was truly aware of Jesus' death and heard all that was happening below on earth. In, in King's death, a King's act, God came down, touched him, punished him, and banished him. And so it was when Jesus died on the cross with all his blood dripping down onto the ground below. Right? His blood would have 
cry out to the Father. And the Father would have come down to punish this tormentors and those who crucified him. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Don't, don't come down and punish them as you did to Cain. You came down, punish him, banish him. No. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. And I think because of that, this, the ones who crucified him was not judged or punished for his death. And the blood of Jesus was crying out from the ground. And the Father God heard the blood of Jesus this ascending to him and cried out and was come down to punish those people. Just like he came down and punished him. And Jesus said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Forgive them. So they were not punished. Forgive them, but they know more what they do. The writing on the cross of the saying, Jesus, King of the Jews, must be on the cross and be seen. Right? When we represent the cross of Jesus in the banner, the inscription at the, at the cross saying, Jesus, King of the Jews, must be dead. The Jews wanted Pilate to take it down, take it down. No, he's not the king of the Jews. But Pilate said, What has been done is done. And you know why? You know why? It is the writing on the cross of God saying, Jesus, the king of the Jews, must be dead, for it foretells the future of Israel and the Jews. In the last days when Jesus will be recognized by them, when he returns and we look upon him whom they have pierced, they will know they have crucified Jesus, the Messiah. Messiah the King, and rejoice, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is Jesus. Is he Jesus? Jesus. Crucified, bleeding from his nails and from his wounds, we will say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Matthew 23. Now, there are three crosses on Calvary, and Calvary must always be represented by three crosses. One cross is insufficient to tell the whole story of God's plan of human mankind. Calvary was preached as on a hill with three crosses, not only with one wooden cross, the sole cross of Jesus. This cross is the gospel cross. The other two crosses represents the rejection of the world to this gospel. The cross of Jesus is a cross of reconciliation of God in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Second Corinthians 1. One cross, probably on Christ's land, was a cross of rejection. Jesus' cross was a cross of reconciliation. The one on the left probably rejected him. It was a cross of rejection, but his was a cross of reconciliation. <coughs> right? Rejection from the world, from the preaching of the cross. It's holy foolishness them that perish. To the Jews, it was a stumbling block and rejection of Jesus as the Messiah. The other cross, probably on Jesus' right, represents the cross of repentance 
of acceptance, of belief, forgiveness, and redemption. A cross of reconciliation, Jesus' cross, a cross of rejection, and a cross of repentance and redemption. Three crosses of belief, reconciliation, rejection, repentance, redemption. Now, before the ministry of Jesus, John the Baptist came preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus also began his ministry saying some, the same thing, Mark 1.15. To reject Jesus is to regret. To repent is to receive God's redemption. Calvary pictured with three crosses. There's a better story of the cross, of the gospel of our Lord, and the consequences of our response to God's love and offer. And offer. Uh, at the end of the ages, and at the second coming of the Lord, there will be a judgment of all nations. Matthew 25. He shall suffer the sheep or the saved ones on his right hand, and the goats and saved ones on his left. The sheep are blessed of the Father and shall inherit the kingdom. But the goats on his left are cursed into everlasting fire. Matthew 25. The two criminals crucified on Jesus' right side, right and left, they also represent the sheep on his right. The one who repented and received God's blessings. Welcome. Be blessed into the kingdom of heaven. The other on probably on Jesus' left are the goats who rejected and ridiculed Jesus and his gospel. This will regret the faith forever and everlasting fire. Now, the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus died. Sufficient on the cross. Now the true of, truth of the cross is that it is an empty cross. Jesus has died. He was taken down. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. By putting Jesus back on the crucifix and on the cross means he is still being crucified. And his sacrifice on the cross has not yet finished. But he said, when he died, before he died, it is finished. It is finished. And he died and gave up his cross. Because his death has finished his sacrificial death on the cross for all mankind. And has been offered as the Lamb of God for the forgiveness of our sins. Has been done. It is finished. If he was buried and is risen from the dead, then the cross or the crucifix must be empty without him. I would suggest that don't wear a crucifix with Christ still in front of you because he has no reason for it. If you want to wear a cross, you need a plain gold cross. Simple cross, no faith of Jesus as a crucifix. Now, the non Catholics, Roman Catholics, represent the cross as an empty wooden cross. Often, it is a new, clean, unblemished, unblemished cross, unlike that of the king, the old cross, the new representative. Cross on a better hook. It was a clean, nice, unstained wooden cross. But it was an old rugged cross and it's scarred. You know when the Romans asked to take up the cross? Did they choose a clean, nice cross for him to take? No. They picked up a pile of wood, nailed it down. Dirty, dirty wooden 
cross. And the cross has been scarred. Has been scarred by the nails. There would be nail marks and tearing of the wood surface where his hands and his feet were pierced through the wood. It would be heavily stained with his blood and dripping down into the ground. Above where his head was, I wrote, King of the Jews. This would be the right representation of the true cross to the world. And in any picture of the cross, the churches, not just an empty, clean, unstained cross, as we had last time. The clean cross does not fully and adequately tell about the full gospel story of the death of his death. A plain, empty, clean cross will work. It's just a religion presenting to the world this is Christianity and not John 3.16 of God's great love for us in the whole world. 1 Corinthians 15 says the cross is risen from the dead. The cross must be empty, meaning Jesus is risen and is now alive forevermore. The nail marks and blood on the cross means his body was broken for us. His body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So we cannot represent the cross as a wooden in cross. cross. It must be with blood, skin, nails, scarred wood. His body was broken. 1 Corinthians 11, 22, 24. Lord's Supper. Take it, the bread. This is my body, which is broken for you. And Jesus' body was broken. Both hands, both feet, crown of thorns, 30, 40 slash. Or 36 or 40 flesh marks on his back and his body. His body was broken for us. And he said to us, Take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. It was broken for us. He shed his blood for us. And thank God, his blood was shed. Without shedding of the blood, there is nothing to do with Sin. By which we are to remember his death of the lost. His body was broken also by the stripes we received, and by whose stripes we received our healing. 1 Peter 2 24. There is blood all over his cross, blood dripping into the ground. The cross of Jesus must be represented. Blood dripping into the ground, reminding us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or remission of sin. Hebrews 9:22. A clean, bloodless cross means no blood has been shed, and we have not been forgiven. No blood on the cross means no blood has been shed. Without the shedding of blood. There is no forgiveness of sins. And the cross without blood is not our cross. When Cain unjustly killed Abel, Abel's blood cried out to God from the ground. Genesis 4 10. And God said, Where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, His blood is crying out to me from the ground. Look at Genesis 4 10. Now, when Jesus was unjustly killed, His blood on the ground may also have cried out to God, meaning God was truly aware of Jesus' death and heard all that was 
happening below on earth. And God was probably maybe coming down to punish those who crucified him. But Jesus, when he was crucified, cried out. I don't know, maybe he knew. And when his blood cried out to God, God was coming down to punish those who crucified him. And he said, Forgive them, Father. They know not what to do. Don't come down and punish them. Forgive them. My blood must be shed. My blood, my blood must come down. And the world will know that has the shedding of the blood. And this is a forgiveness for all my sins. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. He cried out his heart for those who crucified. Forgive them. Forgive them. John 19, uh, Luke 23, John 19, 19. And the cross, and the writing on the cross of God saying, Saint Jesus, King of the Jews, must be on the cross and must be saved. King of the Jews, written by Pilate, nailed on the top of the cross, must be seen, for it foretells the future of Israel and the Jews. It is for the Jews. In the last days, Jesus will be recognized by him when he returns, and they will look on him whom they have pierced, whom they have pierced as their Messiah and King, and rejoice, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The scripture will be fulfilled, not only for us, for the forgiveness of sins, but for the Jews, and they will know that this is the Messiah whom they have crucified. They will look on him whom they have pierced, Zechariah 12, 10. Is the Messiah and the King, and rejoice, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the cross of Jesus Christ. It was not a clean, empty, bloodless cross. Is a cross, a scar, oh, dirty cross, pierced through by the nails, stained by the blood on his head and on his hands and his feet and his back. A bloody cross, not a clean cross, we want to know. And we thank God. When we see the blood on the cross, we know it was shed for us. It was shed for us. And because of that, we have forgiveness of our sins. Thank you. Thank you. And he will come again. Jesus will come again. Yes, Lord, I've read of a number of people who has met Jesus face to face in vision. Yes, Lord. And when they saw Jesus, they knelt down and bowed down to him on the ground and saw his feet pierced by the nails of bleeding. And they know that Jesus really died and was nailed to the cross. And blood, and his blood was shed for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we bless the Lord for these visions of people who have seen Jesus and see his feet pierced by the nails and bleeding of us. We go back to what it was to be done like this. This is the first place. No. Yes. 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 
<laughs> on the gold red cross. And the most stand and recognize it is an old money cross. Cross that's so dirty, so bloodstained, so new scar. But it's a cross that we love because it is a cross that Jesus died for us. And it is a cross that we want to cling to, cling to while we're on earth. So we can exchange it. Exchange it for the crown we receive. Amen.